Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome to episode 27 of Space Engineers. So today and yesterday I was thinking, some of your comments really helped me to design some of these ships. I was thinking, what sort of small ships do you need to protect your small colony or your area that you own in the galaxy? Who knows, you might even own a small shed on an asteroid and you need a little ship to protect it. So let's actually have a look what we've got here. So I've divided them up into four categories. We have ground attack, we have recon slash long distance, we have in this category heavy fighter, and here we have a simple basic fighter, or I would call a light recon fighter. So we'll go through them and I'll talk about the reasons for building different parts and my thought behind the construction. So we've got the ground attack here. So notice how the ground attack is very slim. It is very slim, the wings are very slim, it's all a very slim target to hit. So when that's coming at you, basically the rockets and everything is going to be able to engage you and get a nice line of a destruction on the target. But the same can be said about the enemy when they're firing at you, so they can't get an easy line. They have to be accurate to take your weapons off, and maybe even more accurate to actually eat your gun up. So that was the idea behind the ground attack. We'll move on to the recon slash heavy fighter before we start flying anything. So in the recon slash heavy fighter, the two cockpits is necessary because you need somebody to look out, look around, what's going on, work out your position, map read, because you're going to be far away from the colony or your ship. And we've got the other guy to pilot it around. We've only got light weapons on this. We have two chain guns just to deal with any odd person that you might have a little bit of a problem with so you can't be banditized, as you may want to say it. So we have the heavy fighter here, or the, the just the crazy vehicle, that's what I'm calling it. It's just basically the idea is to completely annihilate whatever you come up against. And anything that gets in the way in front of you with that mount of miniguns is not going to survive. I had a little go before and I'll show you in a minute, but let's just say it devastates. So the idea of that is to get as much firepower in a small and very fast maneuverable package. And I'll show you that in a second. Well, moving on, we have the light fighter, a fighter that many of you guys will probably be launching from your ships. And you should really take a lot of consideration into these. Do you want them to be multi-role? Do you want them to have both rockets and machine guns? Or do you want them to be just simple? Because if you think about it, the rockets are not guiding, and anyone who's moving, it's going to be very hard to hit them. Especially if they're changing directions, and the battles in space are going to be so hard to choreograph, because people are rotating, driving backwards, shooting, flying and rotating, and doing all sorts of crazy procedures. So let's get a little bit of flight done. We're going to head up to our CQB range up there, in our um, A-10 style attack vehicle, you could say. That's what I modelled it on, and it does look pretty similar. And I have to say, it has all the nice features of the A-10, except we're in space. I mean, it is still a bit of a heavy aircraft, it's a bit of a bulky aircraft. But in the same, it's not too fast, and it's not too slow, and they're the perfect sort of things that you don't want for a ground attack. As you can see here, we'll just have a quick switch the hood on. We've got simple cannon. Simple rockets, very nice. So let's actually go up. So the idea with this sort of ship is you want to be able to pick the battlefield clean. So there might be fighting going on on the ground, and you actually want to try to destroy individual targets, for instance. So we're going to actually fly over our CQB range and see what we can do. So we're not traveling too fast. We're traveling at a speed where we can actually pick our targets. So what I'm going to do is disable inertia and dampers, and now we can actually rotate and drive by targets. As you can see there, we've got targets there as well, and we'll do them with a rocket. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, we've got rockets double stacked here, so we're not just firing four, we're actually firing eight missiles at the same time. They're actually going through each other's tubes. So let's actually head back in and try to do a little bit more damage with the minigun, because obviously they don't want to support the other space engineers on the ground in these ship sort of takeovers, you could say. So let's actually see what we can do here. We've got some targets floating around. Inertia dampeners need to go off. Well, they need to go off, yeah. There we go. And now we can actually travel along and pick out that target there. Got a target there too. So 
it's going to be a great little aircraft to support your space and engineers on the ground. And I really want you to think when you're constructing some of your spaceships is how it's going to work. Is it just going to simply be a, a vehicle of devastation like the other one? Or will it be something that, that will challenge other sort of creations themselves? Because, I mean, it's easy to stick a lot of rockets on. But the challenge will be to use as little as possible because in survival, I reckon they're going to do something that will make rockets and machine guns very hard to actually construct maybe or something else maybe make ammunition sort of rarer you need certain rocks to get ammunition have we got our dampeners back on there we do so we've got three more ships to actually have a look at we've got the recon fighter and we have also the light and heavy fighters so let's actually have a look I'm gonna hop out here just let that come to a stop there by itself so here we actually have is a number of three more aircraft to look at. So the first one we're going to look at is the long range recon. So we've got like the two cockpits like I said before and this is going to be handling a bit more slower, a bit more bulky but it's all about traveling slow in this thing and actually reconning and actually telling what you can see. So I'm just going to take this up and I'm going to also turn this probably into a target. So we have got cannons, we've got machine guns. Only two though so it's not too much to actually worry about. But the way this comes in is just the idea of being able to look around. This lower cockpit's not got a good view, but the upper cockpit actually has a great view. So what we're going to do is then quickly switch out to the top one. And you can actually see a lot more than the bottom one, especially if the pilot decides to actually put you at a nice angle. You can map read, you can navigate yourself across the galaxy, and all sorts of different things. Just doing a routine, maybe long distance patrol between two supply bases, escorting some transport ships or so on. So let's park this here anyway. So I probably should have put the dampeners on because that'll just continue floating away. So now we have the heavy fighter. So the concept of this is a fast maneuverable craft with a lot of firepower. And we've got the perfect target by the look of it. So watch this thing rip. I actually have to move it away from the platform and it'll kick me back. So we're going to target that thing. It actually looks like it's going light speed with all these bullets going like this. So as you can see, it's absolutely devastating. I mean, just imagine all that lead coming out, especially if you use this against infantry on the ground rather than trying to take out one of the fighters. But the most important thing is the maneuverability of it. How much can it turn? Can it rotate well? Can it hover? Can it basically do all the angles and still maintain itself? So we're going to move on to the smallest little one that I've built. So this one is basically a cheap one that you could build. You've got rockets and you've got machine guns, so it'd be a great all-round little aircraft to take. So we're going to actually take this one up to our other thing. So the idea of this one is to make it as maneuverable as possible, but at the same time it's got a feel right. So you can feel how that curve there, as we turned, it felt very nice. So we've got another target up here, I believe. We've got some reactive armor to shoot. We've got the whole of the bits we missed as well. So let's bring it on up. So let's access our chain gun. So we've got three chain guns on this model. The problem with weapons is sentiment as well. Just I want you to think about where you place them. Because if you place them on the sides, you might be actually just shooting the sides off the ship. So we've actually gone past, gone too far. But we can also turn this thing around. So there's no aiming reticule. I don't know about what you guys think, but having some sort of aiming reticule, saying where your guns will be pointing, like a dot on the screen, I don't know because it's a little bit hard at the moment. We'll see after what they have to do. So we've got a few targets left in there. We've got one in that room. But as you can see, it's very hard to hit. It's very hard to work out what you're actually going to shoot at. So let's bring ourselves down here. And let's destroy the engine room with some rockets, eh? Very nice. Oh, pull up. There we go. Sorry about that. I pressed my head button by mistake. And it kind of caused me to go a little bit crazy. But anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. And I just want you to think about what sort of fighters you'll be building. And I'll see you next time.